Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today I wanted to take a look at possibly the most powerful and versatile tool in the entire toolbox, and that's the custom tool. Now let's just load that up, let's select the custom tool and let's add it to this clip here and let's have a look at it. And for the most powerful tool in the toolbox, you're wondering why it does absolutely nothing when we first add it. And that's because it's a tool for building our own effects from scratch. So one of the reasons I wanted to show you this was that I know a lot of you find channel booleans a little bit hard to cope with. And this is a much easier way of actually understanding channels, I think. So for example, if we wanted to look at only the red channel, we could come here to the channels tab and we could enter zero for the green and blue channels, and we would get the red channel only. Similarly, if we wanted to put the red channel into each of those channels, we could copy R1, command C, and paste it into green and blue. And then we've got the red channel output as a grayscale RGB image. So that's the equivalent of us adding a channel booleans and copying red foreground to each of the channels. So that's the channel booleans result, and that's the custom tool result. And you can see they're absolutely identical. I just actually find it quite a bit easier to type R1 very quickly into each of those channels than to use this drop down method, which uses rather too much mouse action for my liking. But essentially, they're an identical method. One thing I'd like to point out fairly early on here is that instead of using R1, G1 and B1 and A1 for the alpha, what we can do is use C1 and I can copy that to all the channels. And what that means is it's taking the current value for each channel of image input one and displaying that. And you'll understand why that's fairly handy in just one second. So what I'd like to do now is type C1 times N1, and I'm going to copy that to the RGB. And as it stands, we see nothing. And that's because if we come over to our controls, which is where N1 lives, that's number one here, that's this top slider. We're currently multiplying all the RGB values by zero, which results in the entire image turning black. But if I enter a value of one for that, you'll see we're back to normal. And now I can use that as a gain control. So that's multiplying each of those RGB channels by this N1 value. Let's try it a little bit differently. Let's try C1 times one minus N1. And let's copy that to all three, come back to the controls and then look what happens. We've now got a lift control. We can crush the blacks or we can raise them. Or alternatively, we could come over and use C1 to the power of N1 and copy that to all three. Then our number control is a gamma control. So I think you can see how simple it is to do basic channel operations with this method. OK, so let's try something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to create a background and I'm going to copy it and paste it. I'm going to make this white and then I'm going to merge the white over the black and I'm going to click on the circular mask tool. And we've got this white circle on a black background. OK, I'm going to use that as the secondary input to the custom tool. So we've got a image to input and we're going to use that. So let's have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type C1 times, so that's asterisk, C2. And I'm going to copy that to the RGB. I think you can probably guess that C1 refers to the image one input and C2 refers to the image two input. And you'll see what's happened is that the multiplication has resulted in anything that was black in our source which obviously has a value of zero, is going to be black in our composite because you multiply anything by zero and the result is zero. 
Conversely, if you multiply anything by one, it returns the same result. And obviously, we've got white here in the center. So anything that's being multiplied by white is going to remain as it was. And you'll notice that obviously, if we soft edge this, we'll have gray values, which will create a soft transition between those black and white values and give us a soft edge result to our foreground image. So I just want to do something now a little bit different, and that's to swap out the image. So I'm going to use this green screen image as my image one. And then I want to use my landscape shot as the image three input. And then I want to show you how we would create a composite of this green screen over the top of the landscape using this mat. So effectively a source over operation, which is sometimes called normal or merge, depending on how you want to think of it. OK, so what I'm going to first going to do is put brackets around C1 times C2. And I'm going to copy that and paste it to all three channels. And then I'm going to type plus open brackets C3 times open brackets 1 minus C2 close brackets, close brackets. And then I'm going to copy that to all three channels. And as you see, we've now got a typical source over operation. And you'll notice that we're not actually using an alpha channel for this. We're using this multiplication method. Now what I've done in that second part here, let's just have a look at that separately. If I paste that component into all three channels. You'll see what we've done is we've multiplied our C3 image, which is this landscape shot, by the inverted mat, and that's 1 minus C2. So 1 minus a value gives you the inverse of that value. So it's this process of multiplying one image by the mat and multiplying the other image by the inverse of the mat and then adding the two of them together that creates our source over operation. And that's a very important thing to know about in terms of compositing. This C1 times C2 operation, it's what's known as pre-multiplication. And I'm not going to go into that here, but it's something you really do need to be aware of as someone working in visual effects. OK, let's go a little bit further and let's now look at making a simple green screen here for this composite. OK, so I've got my green screen shot coming into my custom tool and I've got C1 in each of the RGBA expressions. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to come over to the Inter tab. Now, these intermediate expressions allow us to store values that we can then use globally and uh, it saves a lot of extra typing. And we can refer to them using I1, I2, I3, etc. So what I'm going to do in this first intermediate field is type G1 minus max open brackets R1 comma B1 close brackets. And if you've followed my original keying tutorial, you'll know that this is our basic color difference keyer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to intermediate two and I'm going to type clamp open brackets one minus I1 times N1 close brackets. What the clamp is doing is it's ensuring that the resulting values don't either go below zero or above one, which will make a mess of our mat. So what we're doing is we're taking this basic color difference here, which if we come over to our channels and paste that in, I1 into each of those, you'll see what it gives us is an inverted mat. What we're doing in I2 is we're inverting the mat, so it's the right way around, so 1 minus I1, we spoke about that before, and we're multiplying it by our N1 control here. So if we come over to our channels, what we can now do is use our I2 value, which is our final mat, to multiply our red, green and blue. So C1 times I2, and I paste that into each of the RGB. And because I've already set up my N1 value, we've got a pretty decent key there. 
The default of 1 gives you that, and in this instance, increasing the value to around 2.5 clears the backing fairly successfully. What we could also do is we could put this into the alpha channel, and then we've got transparency. And we could then pipe that over the top of our landscape, and we've got our composite. What we haven't got is a despill, so let's have a look at how we do that. I'm going to come over to Inter again and come to the Intermediate 3 field. So I'm going to type min, open brackets, g1, comma, open brackets, r1 plus b1, close brackets, times 0.5, close brackets. So this is effectively saying if any green pixel is greater than the average of the red and blue pixel, then return the average of the red and blue pixel, otherwise return the green pixel. We could enter this as an if expression, but this is actually a lot tidier. So now what we can do is use this value for the green channel. So let's come over to our channels here. And instead of C1 for the green expression, let's enter I3. And you'll see we've got a perfectly adequate despill there. Now, by this point, you've probably had enough, but I have to say that we really have only scratched the surface of this incredibly powerful tool, and I do urge you to try and get friendly with it, because there's no end to what you can do with it. So thanks very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again on the next one.